I'm going to continue with the example from the last video uh, where we're putting constraints on our generic types. Uh, first of all, I think we should motivate why we put these constraints on our generic types. If you look at return val, it's of type T. And if I go down here, return val dot, you see I get equals, get hash code, get type, and two string. And the last time I checked, object, if I have 12 on that, object defines all those functions up here. So I can call those on any type T because I know any type T inherits from object, at least inherits from object. Okay, now when I say type T inherits class 1, well, basically I'm saying I can call any function or do any operation that class 1 provides because I know that T must be a class 1 or it inherits class 1. Right now, class 1 doesn't do anything. So let's, let's go down here and say void or public void foo and we need a, a foo is not complete without a bar. So now when I say return val, I can also say foo and I can say bar because within the context that T is defined, the compiler can see that T T is of type class one. So anyway, foo, execute that, return val dot bar, squiggly should go away. When IntelliSense catches up, there we go. And it compiles just fine. Build succeeded. So that's why we even have this constraint um, features is that we want to do things with our generic type, and in order to do those things with our generic type, we need to constrain our type to other types. But notice the uh, constraint here gets our generic type to be a little less generic. Okay, now I can no longer call produce A with class 1, or I can call it with class 1 and call it with class 2, but I cannot call it with class 3, as I showed in the previous video. So T cannot just be any type or any generic type, but it, it, it is restricted to being a class 1. And also, I'm further restricting it to have a parameterless constructor. Right? Now, if you go here and you try to add a third class, let's say class 1 and class... Well, I don't even get the IntelliSense help for this. Class 3. So T has to be a class 1 or a class 3. Let's put a comma out there. Notice I'm not even getting the syntax coloring there because it's illegal to define more than one class type as a restriction. The class type constraint class 3 must come before any constraints. And that's called a primary constraint meaning the, the primary constraint can be a class, but it can only be one class. Now, if you think about this, if I have a type, C-sharp doesn't support multiple inheritance, which means we can inherit from multiple types. There's other languages, such as C++, that do, and there's reasons they do. There's reasons why C-sharp does not support it. But if I have a class, I don't know, uh, fishy class, okay, and it inherits class 1, well, I cannot further come out here and say, well, it inherits class three as well. That's just not allowed in C sharp. Now you could think, well, what if fishy class inherited um here let me see how I set this up. Say class three say class three, we say class three inherits from class one. Okay, well now you think, well, fishy class if it inherits from class three fishy class inherits class three and class three inherits from class one. Well fishy class now satisfies both these constraints, so why can't I say both of them? Well, it's superfluous to say both of them, because once I say class 3, then I'm also saying class 1, because class 3 inherits from class 1 now. Okay, so that's a primary constraint. I can only have one class type constraint um, listed out here on my generic type. Okay, but I can do several interface types. Um, let's get rid of that and get rid of this again. Say I say T is T can be a class 3, but it also has to implement I clone, or let's do I convertible and I clonable, or not I convertible twice. I clonable, and I don't know, let's, what other I's are there? I enumerable, okay? Well, now, <laughs> if we get down here on return val, I can't do foo and bar anymore because, because I took away class 1. We're doing class 3. Okay, but I can say uh, return val dot, and I get all these interface method options. I can do clone for my clonable, or I can do uh, get numerator for my enumerable, and I convertible. I don't even know what's in there. All these methods. Ooh, yeah, convert to any any primitive data type. Look at that. So dot two. Oh, all these come because I restricted t to being the these interface types, but. Hopefully that kind of rubs you a little wrong, that if T is implementing this, and it's implementing that, and 
I, yeah, I mean, that probably makes sense for it. I could see a type implementing these interfaces, but but the more interface types we put out here, I, I don't know, formatable, and I so on, the less generic our generic type is getting. We're really becoming very con constrictive. And at that point, hopefully you scratch your head and think, you know, what's 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 the point of doing all this? Why don't I just say, uh, produce a class 3 here. Or not a class 3. Say, I, I, Let's make a class that actually satisfies all this. This is going to be kind of ugly, but let's do it. Control C, and it also has to have a parameter constructor. Let me get rid of this. I got red error, errors all over the place. So I'm going to say class satisfies everyone. It's going to inherit class 3 and implement all these interfaces. And I'm going to use control dot heavily to get all these interface implementations. And I'm hitting control dot and enter. Control dot and enter. And then control MO to collapse. Oops, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. Control MO. Uh, I guess that got... Uh, I don't know why that's not working. But let's collapse all these. Okay, so I have them all collapsed now, nice and formatted. But satisfies everyone. Look at all the heavy lifting this class has to do because it's implementing so many interfaces. Anyway, so now I can say produce a satisfies everyone. Right? And the red squiggly should go away. Because satisfies everyone, inherits class 3, and, and uh, does all this stuff. But, uh... Really, at that point, how generic is this T? It's not really generic, because it has to do all this stuff. And really, I think Satisfies Everyone is going to be the only class I shall ever write in my lifetime that implements all these interfaces. So at that point, what what is the T bias? Let's just say Satisfies Everyone. Produces Satisfies Everyone. Get rid of the generic stuff. Say Satisfies Everyone there. And then replace C with sa T with Satisfies Everyone satisfies everyone okay so that's that's why I mean the constraints are good because they allow us to call methods and do things with our generic type and if you have one or two constraints on them on on your generic type here and there yeah, that's probably useful but once you start having all those restrictions at some point your T is really just one or two classes and it's not that generic so so uh, why why keep the generic uh, genericness because it's not really buying us anything okay anyway I'm gonna I'm going to stop this video here. It's getting a little long, but I do want to talk a little bit further about these constraints in the next video and hopefully wrap up.